Howdy folks, welcome to this video on the topic of linear algebra where we are going to discuss orthogonal and orthonormal sets of vectors. We'll do some handwritten examples to further this discussion. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about the process of this video, do not hesitate to let me know. But without further ado, let's begin. So let's start by discussing what orthogonal vectors are. We can say a set of vectors is orthogonal or the relationship between all of these vectors is that they are orthogonal if their inner product between these vectors is zero. Now, what exactly does it mean? Well, it means this, and that may not be too helpful if you don't understand what this notation means. So let's actually discuss it because it's not that scary. This notation denotes the inner product, and it's used quite a lot when working in areas that deal a lot with linear algebra. For example, from my background in physics, we actually call this Brockett notation. But this notation is actually quite simple to understand. This notation right here for some vector v is just a column vector. This notation right here for some vector v just represents the conjugate of that vector, or if we're working strictly in real space, that is just a row vector. Now, this conjugate is going to change depending on whether you're working in complex space, but for the sake of simplicity with this video, we're just going to continue on working uh, with the assumption that we're working in real space, or Rn. So when we put all of this together, this inner product looks like this. We have a row vector that is uh, one row by n columns, and then a column vector that is n rows by one column, which is going to give us a one by one value, or a scalar value, so that actually just gives us the dot product between these two vectors. And so the dot product is just a very specific variant of the inner product. All right, so let's do a quick example and see if these two vectors in this set are in fact orthogonal. So we'll start off by computing v1 by v2, which is 1, 1, 2 as a row vector. And then this column vector, so pretty simply, this is just 1 minus 2 plus 2, which is equal to 1, which is not equal to 0. So these two vectors are not orthogonal. Alternatively, we could just flip these vectors around, and we should end up seeing the same thing. And so this is one of the interesting properties of the inner product is that if we do v1, v2, or one vector by another, and then switch them around, they should end up both seeing the same result. And so we can say for sure that this set of vectors is not orthogonal. All right, in this next example, we have another set of two vectors in a three space. Let's see if the inner product here is zero to see whether or not these vectors can be considered orthogonal. which gives us 3 minus 2 minus 1, which equals 0. So this set of vectors we can consider to be orthogonal. We might as well check the opposite here of v2, v1. is still 0. Now this next example here, though, is designed to help illustrate why it might be useful to understand whether or not we could consider a set of vectors to be orthogonal because ultimately this is just uh, recognizing a relationship between all of these vectors. And that is clearly seen right here in the case of these unit vectors. Geometrically speaking, all of these vectors are perpendicular to one another. And being able to identify this with sets of vectors is something that will be a very useful exploit in a much broader scope. And so that brings us on to another relationship very similar to orthogonal vectors, which is orthonormal vectors. We can say that a set of vectors are orthonormal if the vectors are orthogonal and are also normalized. And what does that normalized piece mean? Well, it means that the two norm of each one of the vectors in the set is equivalent to 1. So if we go back to our second example where we have two orthogonal vectors in three space, let's see if these are orthonormal. We can just take the two norm of this first vector, 
So we're going to get the square root of 11, since that's going to be 9 plus 1 plus 1. So this first vector is not normalized. Now that first vector was not normalized, so we already know that that set of vectors is not an orthonormal set of vectors, but we can very easily normalize a vector by just taking that vector and dividing it by the two norm of that vector. So if we want to convert a set of orthogonal vectors to orthonormal vectors, all we need to do is just compute the two norm of each vector and then divide each value of the vector by the vector's respective two norm. So let's go ahead and do that. So from before, the two norm of our first vector is the square root of 11. The two norm of our second vector is just going to be the square root of 1 plus 4 plus 1, which is the square root of 6. So if we want to make a new set of vectors, u1 and u2 from our set of v vectors, well that's pretty simply just v1 and v2, which pretty simply just ends up being 1 on root 11 times our v1 vector and then 1 on root 6 times our v2 vector. Now if we look back at our example with the unit vectors, this is obviously a set of orthonormal vectors. And this is, again, a very useful relationship to be able to identify between a set of vectors. All of these vectors have the same two norm, so they're the same magnitude, and they are all perpendicular. And in many instances, we can use this relationship or exploit this relationship to do some pretty cool things. But that'll do it for this discussion on the topic of orthogonal and orthonormal vectors. Again, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, do not hesitate to let me know. This video is the first building block in a set of videos where we're going to be building up to doing some pretty amazing stuff. So subscribe or stay tuned if you want to catch up and see what this is building towards every step along the way. But with that said, thank you very much for watching, and I will hope to see you again next time.